This episode of ETC is brought to you by the Baca Chronicles and Go90. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Weekly Weird News. Hangovers suck. Sure. And while everyone's got their own special little hangover cure that they swear by, whether it's Gatorade or painkillers or Mexican food or some hair of the dog that bit you, or a combination of all of them, we as a species are way overdue for a doctor-approved, medically sound hangover solution. Anyways, it turns out that medical science totally already came up with the solution. We're just too poor to have known about it. Damn. And that solution is an intravenous drip, or IV for short. Basically a big bag full of electrolyte hydration, vitamins, and pain and nausea medication straight into your bloodstream. They have this in uh, in Vegas. You can yeah. get doctors come to your room. I, I learned that today, yeah. yeah. Medically administered IV hangover cures first came to my attention this week when Australia's first hangover clinic made the news rounds online. Based in Sydney, the hangover clinic is exactly what it sounds like. It's a doctor's office that you go to when you wake up feeling like the Coors Light train ran you over, or yeah. whatever the Australian equipment, the, the Foster's train. They do not drink Foster's The there. Foster's kangaroo punched you in the face. I'm, everyone in the comments from Australia is gonna be like, we do not drink Foster's. I went there and I was like, let what me do they Foster's. Drink? What do they drink? Don't remember. I don't know, their beers are like drunk. $18 a piece, so they'll probably drink whatever you give them. No, it's, they don't drink Foster's. And there's very strict uh, drinking guidelines in bars there. Uh, uh, you'll talk about it in the comments. <laughs> the most basic package uh, consists of one liter of IV hydration plus vitamin B and C vitamins, uh, and a choice of headache or anti-nausea medication for a $140 reduce, with the top tier being $200 reduce. Uh, that'll include more hydration, both headache and nausea medication, and an antioxidant boost. Oh, also, Oxygen treatment. Yeah, I like one of them oxygen parts. Yeah. In US dollars, that's $100 for the basic package and $144 for the better one. Uh, depends on how bad your hangover is, but sometimes that's worth it. Yeah, so this kind of thing is nothing new here in the States, though, where IV hangover treatments have been around for years, starting in New York City and Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Two cities of sin that are very easy to get way too drunk in thanks to their abundance of nightlife and extremely late hours. Many of these services in the US offer house calls, meaning if your hangover really is the worst of the worst, you don't even have to leave the house. It's like Uber for hangover mm -hmm. cures. Uh, you just call one of these IV services and let them into your home when they arrive. After a good 30 to 60 minute drip, your nurse is on their way out the door and you're back to not feeling like the walking dead. Now, this being the US, though, with our just rock solid economy, mm -hmm. prices are a bit higher than over in the land of the dollar we do. Uh, packages from New York City's Hangover Club cost between $199 and $249, and the detox package from the IVDoc.com, available in New York, LA, Chicago, San Fran, and Park City, will cost you $219. We should do this and write it off. We should just I'm stay curious. here one night and get wasted and then call these people in the morning and try to do a show while we, uh, like right after we pull the IV out and try to do we a show. We take that out of our budget. Yeah. We should do this. Let's do it. So like we said, yeah, there is a real doctor approved, medically sound hangover solution out there. But unless you're willing to shell out some serious coin after a night of drinking, which already probably cost you a ton of money, too bad, you bum. Better get richer. Yeah. It's funny, I've heard of like people who are friends with like EMTs, paramedics, the, those people have been doing this for years. Yeah, they know the they, secret. Yeah, they just pop in, give themselves uh, an IV, and they're good to go. In fact, the guy who runs the uh, the Sydney one, he said that he first learned about this when he was working as a ski instructor because all of the uh, the ski patrol people, who are all licensed paramedics, they would all get wasted, stay out super late, and then be up at like 5 a.m. Saving like, lives. Maybe, yeah, that's exactly what I want. Saving lives. Yeah. Well, maybe you can just buy the ingredients and then just find your vein. I looked at it, so it's not <laughs> it's not saline, it's this uh, newer saline alternative, but you can buy a bag of it for like $9. Sure. So assuming you're good at needles, which you're probably not. Well, you can get good at it. <laughs> I know people that, uh, you know, well, I don't know them personally. There's a lot of people that do heroin that probably yeah. aren't like uh, doctors or anything. Mm, yeah. You can find a vein, and then you just shoot it in between your fingers and toes if you run out. Yeah, see, probably don't want to do that. Mm. But I mean, all of the ingredients are out there for a much cheaper price, as long as you're willing to like risk your life uh, just administering medical care to yourself. One time at Coachella, I saw a, a girl stick a needle of B12 into her butt. I guess it gives you energy or something. Yeah, I tried that once. Not in the butt, but uh, in the shoulder. It just hurt. Yeah. It didn't really help anything. Sure. Well, let's move on from feeling like death to actually wishing for death, because Korea has a suicide problem. In fact, they've got the second highest suicide rate in the world, and by far the highest among developed first world nations. Now the reasons for this are complicated and not fully understood, but pretty much since Korea's 1997 financial crisis, they've led the industrialized world in suicides, and most attempts by the government and private organizations to do anything about it have failed to lower the suicide rate. Just like the war on drugs. Yeah. The war on suicide. Just 
drives it up higher. <laughs> so now some people are thinking way outside the box about how to fix the Korean suicide problem. And the latest solution to make the news involves, you know, taking depressed or suicide people and making them simulate their own death and burial. Sure! I mean, the, the founders of the Huon Healing Center in Seoul believe that actually allowing people to act out their own funerals offers, quote, experimental death in order to better appreciate life. Okay. And that experimental death consists of having your portrait taken in the same style as portraits placed on a coffin, watching a short film about suicide and people who have overcome extreme obstacles, reading a farewell speech to other participants, and then putting on your best burial clothes, getting into a coffin, and then having an angel of death dressed in all black close it shut, leaving you inside the coffin in dead silence for 10 minutes. I can't see how this could go wrong at all, Elliot. Oh. Someone who's crippled by financial burden and health like, Why'd you open the coffin after 10 minutes? I yeah, told no. you to let me die. Yeah, I could see, like, at least, I, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but at least 80% of these people being like, yeah, okay, I still want to kill myself. Yeah, no, see, pretty good. Very <laughs> relaxing. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, when they're finally allowed to come out, the head of the therapy center tells participants, now you know what death looks like. You are alive. Fight for Korea! <laughs> That's a weird way to end it. Yeah. <laughs> Participant reactions to the whole thing reportedly vary quite a bit, but at this point, pretty much anything is worth a shot to get Koreans to stop killing themselves. It's like the idea in America where it's like, if you want to purchase a gun and bullets, you have to talk to a family of someone who's lost their uh, family members to gun violence. It's a very weird personal way to, I mean, keep, get people not interested is that in a, something? That's a proposal for- No, well, I mean, it's not an actual proposal, oh. but it's what people online say that you should have to do. It's not like going to uh, the Senate or well, anything. I mean, like when you get a car, you have to do driver's training and they pretty much show you all the worst possible things that could yeah. happen in that. Yeah, maybe so, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, pff, I don't know, who cares? As weird as Korea's suicide problem and the funeral simulation solution to it seem to us Americans, we've got plenty of aspects of our own culture that are just as baffling to foreigners. Guns? being a huge one. Mm -hmm. But if you find pro-gun culture in America bizarre, you'll be happy to learn that anti-gun culture here is just as weird. In last week's headline section, we told you about a group of gun rights advocates in Texas who are planning to stage a mock mass shooting at the University of Texas to advocate for guns being allowed in typically gun-free zones like college campuses. While their argument, the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun is debatable, what's less debatable is that staging a mock mass shooting just a few weeks after one of the worst mass shootings in US history Probably not in uh, good taste. No, it's not. Anyway, with University of Texas being right in the heart of Austin, it should come as absolutely no surprise that the protests against the proposed school shooting simulation weren't your typical boring old picket signs and chants. Nope, counter protesters responded to the mock mass shooting with their own mock mass farting. I'm taking the Monty Python approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the organizers of the mass farting, which also featured open carrying of dildos. I love that part. <laughs> yes. Said of the mock mass shooting, Clearly these people have no problem with demonstrations that are in poor taste. So we will be meeting their threats with humor. There will be people waving dildos as well. Keep Austin weird. Yeah. Uh, organizers invited attendees to bring fart noisemakers, including toys, smartphone apps, whoopee cushions, or even their own butts. <laughs> and of course, dildos. And it seems like it went about as successfully as a mass farting could go, because we don't really have any other mass fartings to compare it to. That's true. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> Keep Austin, Keep Austin weird. weird. Go see the bats, go see the mass farting. Yeah. It's good. Uh, I love Austin. Uh, anyways, let's get over to headlines, guys. Yeah, here's some of the weirdest headlines that we read on actual news websites this past mm -hmm. week, starting with Texas grandmother, 81, smashes beer mile, says she could have run a lot faster drinking scotch. You have to explain this entire thing to me, because I saw the headlines and I was like, do you drink beer while you're running? And didn't she beat her granddaughter or something? Yeah, so I, I had never done a beer mile myself. I, I had to look it up. So a beer mile, it's one mile, Okay. but uh, you chug a beer before you start, and then at every quarter mile, you have to chug another beer mm -hmm. and then run. Uh, and you get disqualified if you vomit or like fall down. I think we could do that, me and you. Oh, I've been training for it my whole life. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, she, she did it. She beat her like daughter-in-law, I think, or mm -hmm. her daughter. Uh, Maybe that's one of our Christmas episodes we do where we try to do the beer mile tomorrow or something. Oof. No? no? I mean, oh, you were talking yourself up uh, quite a bit. I need time to train. You said you've been training your whole life. I guess you're right. Yeah. Put your money where your mouth is. All right, maybe we'll do the beer mile as well as, uh, and then right afterwards we'll order the in vitro or the IV uh, <laughs> yeah, that's hangover what we'll do. cure thing. Yeah, if we don't die. Uh, but yeah, she's like, whatever. Should have been drinking scotch. I don't really drink beer. It's more of a hot weather thing. Yeah. There you so, go. Good for you, Granny. Next up, upstate New York man caught smoking pot in, quote, 
police cars only parking spot. Listen, I'm not trying to generalize, but as far as drug users go, they're not uh, very, uh, they usually do things that are completely ironic. There's a lot of drug <laughs> users that do things that are stupid, but pot seems to be an ironic drug. Like, We're, oh man, wouldn't it be hilarious if we smoke <laughs> weed in this police cars only spot? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's almost like a challenge. Well, it's also, it's it's like, like when I was uh, young and smoking weed, it'd be like, oh, where should we drive the car to smoke? And it would always be stuff like, oh, the parking lot of like this school. Or it's like, yeah, no, the worst idea. Yeah, it's like, oh, the, the penalties are like four times worse if you get caught there. It's like, no, nah, man, school. Just go in the woods, bro. <laughs> we didn't have woods. Oh, well. <laughs> we had parking lots and neighborhoods. Yeah. Well, you'll learn. Woman who shot at Home Depot shoplifters vows to never help anyone again. I can't see why. So, <laughs> she like, she got in trouble because- If helping people is shooting other people, then fuck you. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, she was at Home Depot, some people stole probably a couple dozens of dollars worth of oh, gear. Oh, good. And she saw the commotion, she pulled out her open carry thing and just started shooting at a moving vehicle. Yeah. And then police showed up and they were like, uh, what, so, so you did what? <laughs> uh, that's kind of irresponsible and uh, probably violates some laws. Even Batman, who has a pretty good track record with vigilante uh, yeah. uh, police work, still is looked down upon by the police. Well, it's, I mean, if they had like killed someone, maybe. They yeah. just stole some stuff. Yeah, who cares? Just so, let them go. Yeah, so she got in trouble and like after all the She thought in her head that she was going to be a hero. Oh yeah, yeah. So like after all the trouble she went through, she's just like, you know what? Helping people just makes you spend a few months in court. Yeah. People yelling at you. So never going to do it again. Never going to help anyone again. Mm -mm. Trump's doctor says Trump, quote, will be the healthiest individual ever elected president. That is, I can't think of something that's further from the truth. Well, this he, is not a real headline. He claims to have never drank alcohol, smoked, or done drugs in his life. Well, that may be true, but the man is 69 years old. I mean, he's still like 10 years younger than Bernie Sanders. But, but he's not as young as JFK. That's true. Yeah. Or Barack Obama. Sure. A very healthy man. He was so healthy. Yeah. An athlete. Although Obama does have a little secret smoking habit. Oh, he smoked a joint. Whoa. Yeah, oh. Anyway, I, uh, Trump's doctor looks hilarious. Yeah. He looks they, like Trump's doctor. Yeah, and if Trump can afford anything, it's a doctor who will say exactly what he wants him to say. And the, the the medical like thing was even written kind of in Trump's voice. It was just like, yeah, he's got the best health ever. No, he, yeah. Everyone he else's health sucks. Uh, Trump wrote it himself and then had the guy sign <laughs> yes. it. It's like a, a doctor's note for, like going to school. All of his hair is real too. Yeah, take that. <laughs> Lame stream media. Uh, drunk driver attempts to hide from police in nativity scene. Did he get away this with it? This is brilliant. Well, obviously not. But, that's, that's how uh, Macaulay Culkin got away from the plumbers in Home Alone at first. Oh yeah! <laughs> that's oh, exactly. yeah. He probably had, what, he probably just came from watching. He oh. stole a toothbrush. Yeah. And then the, the plumbers almost hit him. Yeah. And then he hid. And when the cops came like close, they were about to catch him. He had like paint cans strung up on strings and tried yeah. to hit Whack! the micro machines and all. He didn't the whole do that. Yard. Well, maybe he did. I yeah. don't know. But uh, it's kind of genius, actually. Seems like something you could get away with. So yeah. Just uh, if you're running from anyone. You hey, who's a... that crazy white guy sitting in between all those Middle Eastern people in the nativity scene? Mushroom suspect takes magic mugshot. Just a great headline. And the guy, I mean, looks like the little handcuffs around his wrist situation is not taking anything away from just how much he's loving his mushroom trip. Yeah. The whole story behind it's funny too, is because he like locked himself out of his apartment. The police got called because they thought it was a break in. He's like, no, no, I just locked myself out of the apartment. Uh, can you guys come in and help me find my keys? And then there was just <laughs> mushrooms drugs everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. They were like, dude, <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Woman looking for New Jersey in Jersey City charged with DWI. It's a dead giveaway. She found it. She found dead giveaway yeah. that you're in New Jersey. Or a dead, dead giveaway that you're drunk is that you say you're looking for New Jersey in yeah, New Jersey. Why would you be looking for New Jersey in any city? No. No, no one's ever looking for New Jersey. You're looking for way to get out. I'm looking for New York. Yeah. Tell me which jug handle turn I gotta take to get to New York. <laughs> Man hears unrelated police activity, turns himself in for allegedly growing marijuana. What? He had a grow operation set up in a storage locker and he heard sirens, then he heard a helicopter. Oh, no. Thought it was a police helicopter. Turns out it was just a news helicopter because there was a murder that had happened like a block away. Take so me away. He called 911 and was like, all right. You got me. You, you got me. I'm the guy they're looking for. I'll come out peacefully. Again. And they're like, well, actually, no, but. I ironic. Way to get yourself arrested. Yeah. Yeah. It's all paranoia. Yeah. Anyway. That sucks. 18-wheeler hauling fire extinguishers 
catches fire on I-10. Did they have anything to put it out with? Did no, the guy have no. one in his, uh, in his uh, actual rig? I don't know. Oh, no, it, but it, it caused a real big fire. It was a uh, quite well, an obstacle. Wouldn't the, wouldn't eventually the fire make those things explode and then all the stuff would go all over the? Fire? They're only uh, effective once they've been like oh. spread through the air. Like by themselves, I think they're actually very flammable because they're pressurized. Yeah. Mm. So it was probably just it, a huge explosion. Thwarted by chemical reactions again. Damn. Mm. Naked Oregon man found in Kansas wheat field told go back to liberal home. We don't take kindly to naked folks in our cornfields out yeah. here in Kansas. Go back to Oregon, Portlandia. Yeah. We made it past some laws at the government level. We don't want any naked dudes walking all yeah. over our land. Here in Kansas, we cover up our naughty bits. Mm -hmm. I fell and penetrated her by accident. Millionaire rape suspect claims in court. Isn't that an actual <sighs> rap lyric? That's Eminem, trip fell, landed on, it, landed on uh, my dick. Maybe this guy's been listening to a lot of Eminem. Yeah. Either way, uh, I mean, Innocent until proven guilty or all that. But yeah. this guy sounds like he's probably an actual rapist because yeah. that is the just the lamest explanation. Maybe he's going for ever. the uh, like uh, uh, psycho theory, like he can't stand trial because he's crazy. Like who would make up an excuse like that? But he's rich. He doesn't want to get locked up. Well, you know, locked up in a in, insane asylum is probably better than a jail. You got those nice padded walls. I don't know. You I can think, sleep at any angle. I think he genuinely thinks the jury will believe that he's like. Whoa, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Oops, sorry. I mean, I guess anything could happen. Sure. This probably didn't happen, though. It probably didn't. Oh, okay, yeah. well, yep. actually, update. Mm -hmm. uh, turns out the I tripped and fell and my penis fell into her defense is a rock solid defense. Yeah, it because worked. Because he was declared innocent. So, that's cool. Just it lie might and have be a Saudi prince. Be a Saudi <laughs> prince. <laughs> yeah, things, things seem to work out in your favor if you're a Saudi prince and you're just accidentally falling in your. Slipping your dick into people on accident. Yeah, whoops. Oh, well. Anyways, guys, that's Weekly Weird News for this week. Check out other content over here. We have a brand new episode of Tech Tuesday where hoverboards are exploding and you have to register your drone with the FAA. Big government. Big government. Trump wouldn't allow that. No. Fly your drone wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah. We're, Especially we're gonna, at the border. We're going to look into this. And then shoot people if they come over. Because yeah. he said that. Just got to keep these hoverboards out of the Mexican hands. Yeah. Because they'll cross make the them in, Make them in America. These Chinese batteries. Uh, We're speaking as Trump, not as us. Yeah. Also, a new podcast and a new episode of News Dump. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.